welcome to this lecture. It's going to be a lecture on Latin square designs. So this is, there's no SAS or R companion that goes through this because the way that you analyze these is just as a one-way ANOVA or two-way ANOVA if you've got two independent variables. The key for Latin square design or the reason behind having a Latin square design is it reduces the effects of geography. So Latin square design. In some ways, this should have been taught back with the one-way analysis of variance because, quite honestly, the example I'm going to get is it can be analyzed or will be analyzed with one-way analysis of variance. So, here's the example. Let's go back and look at uh, getting a good eraser. Yeah, that's close enough. I'll throw this over here. So, we want to determine which of four fertilizers is best on the yield of wheat. Let's call it wheat. We could do rice or corn. Let's do wheat. So the dependent variable is yield. Okay, it's got to be wheat now because I wrote it. The independent variable is going to be fertilizer type. Let's say that there's four fertilizers, four very well-known fertilizers, W, X, Y, and Z. So levels are W, X, Y, and Z. And we probably want to tell which, which of those four, four fertilizers gives us the best yield. Wait a minute. That makes this a fixed effect because we want to compare the actual levels themselves. And as it stands, we could go back to lecture number one and see how to analyze this experiment. But because we're actually doing some planting, we want to take care in how we design and carry out that experiment. So pause here and go outside, look at how your grass is growing. Or if you've got a garden, look to see how your garden is growing. So hit pause. Welcome back. If you notice you've got a garden or a lawn and you've got this cool lawn or a garden here, I probably should draw it in green to indicate something that's growing, but let's not. And you've got the sun over here. And the fact that the sun goes in some sort of arc here, the sun doesn't hit all parts of your lawn the same. So you've got some dry patches or some, some sparse patches because the sun hits the lawn differently. Maybe you've got a stream that goes along this side. That's water. You can tell because it's blue. And so if you've got a garden here, you've, this, this stream is going to affect how your plants grow over here. And let's say you've got a nuclear power plant up there. Okay, that doesn't look like a nuclear. Let's say you have a volcano up there instead of a nuclear power plant. The location of this volcano is going to affect your garden or your lawn differently here than it does over here. If you just do a simple, complete, really randomized design for this, you break this up into four pieces. Y, X, Z. Probably that's how it would come out. And you grow your wheat with this fertilizer and you measure the yield and you come to some conclusions. But the conclusion you'd come to would be affected by the geography, which you're not actually measuring here. Because the sun would affect W and Z differently than X and Y. The water would affect X and Y differently than W and Z. And the volcano would affect Y different from the, all the others. So you've got that reality on the ground, the geography, actually affecting the outcome. And you're not measuring it. You're not controlling for it. And what the Latin square design does is it allows you to control for that geography. Here's how it's done. Notice there's four levels in your fixed effect. So your Latin square design is going to break up this larger chunk of land into four times four, which is 16 different parts. So instead of a W, X, Y, and Z in four separate parts, we're going to split up that W, X, Y, and Z across 16 parts. Wait 
things are set up, we're going to make sure that all four of those parts are along the water edge. All four of those parts are going to be up here in this corner. All four of those parts are going to be along this left edge. And in doing so, we'll control for the effect of the river, the sun, and the volcano. A Latin square design. Go to start at W. Allows us to do that. W, X, Y, and Z. And then X, Y, and Z. W, Y, Z, X. No, no. Y, Z, W, X. And then X, Y, Z. your basic Latin square design, 4 by 4 Notice that every row contains each of the fertilizers. Every column contains each of the fertilizers. Now, because the way that this is set up, we're going to have to make a change to this basic Latin square design. This volcano is affecting these four plots. So we're going to have to make sure there's an X, a Y, a W, and a Z in each of those four. We got two Z, so let's change this out to be an X. But, so that takes care of the volcano corner, but that means we're also going to have to change this to what's missing in Z. Now we're doubled up in Z, so change this to an X. We're doubled up in X's, so change this to a Z. And we've got a Latin square design. That takes into consideration the stream, the sun, and the volcano. The analysis of this is one-way analysis of variance fixed effect. So the analysis is the same as it was back on lecture one. The setup for the de experimental design, however, is what makes this a Latin square design, and it's done to control for realities on the ground. In this case, quite literally. It's done to control for the effect of the volcano. It's done to control for the effect of the water. It's done to control for the effect of the sun. So Latin square design doesn't introduce any new analysis, and that's why there's no SAS or R companion to this lecture. What the random square design does, however, is helps control for those variables that you know about, and perhaps those variables that you don't know about. I mean, there's an ant colony down here that you never actually noticed. I don't know how to draw ant colonies. You didn't notice that, so you couldn't measure it, but the Latin square design will actually control for that ant colony. There's notice, and W, X, Y, and Z is here in the corner. So it controls for that what you know, and for that what you don't know. So, Latin square design. Very useful experimental design when you're dealing with the ground. Outside of plotting and plants and things, I'm not sure. I'm sure you could come up with some examples where you would need to use the Latin square design. So, enjoy yourself, and that's the end of this lecture.